Hello there Pisces, welcome to your reading. So first image that I saw was um, I see a hand holding a key and it looks like one of those skeleton keys like you know like the, the really old uh, keys from a long time ago. It's very unique and there's a gate and it's opening like the I see the hand turning the key putting the key into the keyhole on this gate and then it opens up and it's really dark on one side but as soon as it opens up there's like it opens into this um, garden it almost feels like you know the the secret garden there's a fountain there's light streaming through there are a lot of vines uh, climbing up the trellises and there are birds so it's opening from a dark room it opens into the light and it opens into something very very amazing and spectacular and um, the message I was getting from that is things are not what they seem you need to give things a chance okay so whatever is coming at you and you're inclined to feel like uh, I don't think that's the right thing for me I don't think that's the right person for me I don't think that's the right job for me I don't think that's the right house for me in particular I don't think that's the right situation for me and you're kind of uh, nodding your head at it mainly because it doesn't really fit your expectations I feel like you're going to surprise yourself or you're gonna find yourself pleasantly surprised that there are good things about that situation that there it, it's it's almost like it's going to exceed your expectations okay by all means if your intuition is telling you this is dangerous I don't want to get involved in it please don't do it but what I mean is if it's something that's you know not entirely ticking off all the, the marks in your checklist and you're inclined to say no just because of fear or just because you feel like it's going to be a certain way and you feel like there's no harm in trying it I would say go for it okay because I feel like it's going to pleasantly surprise you and it's really going to exceed your expectations now with the imagery of the key we always have a um, the key always denotes like the answer right the answer answer to something and uh, what I feel is you know opening up a new path it basically means unlocking some type of a potential within you unlocking some type of a situation that you feel you've been very stuck at and unlocking possibly a new phase in your life or even that new chapter that you're supposed to embark on and so the the uh, double meaning that I'm getting as well is I feel like there is a, a part of your life that might have felt very stagnant I feel like it's being freed up it's being open and I feel like you're either finding the solution to your problems you're finding a solu solution to a specific thing or you're finding some type of an answer that's gonna bring you a lot of clarity and it's going to bring you um, new energies to kind of like propel you push you forward to the next phase of your life okay um, the second image that I saw was um, I see this hot air balloon it's a cartoon looking hot air balloon so um, there's somebody that lights it up like lights the torch and then the hot air balloon just starts ascending it rises rises so first you see houses and then you see like electricity uh, strings and poles and then you see birds and then you see like um, low-lying clouds and then it goes into the stratosphere and you see like really high flying clouds and then all of a sudden it, it, it stops okay all of a sudden it stops and it stops because there's like a rain cloud right above it okay so it seems like the rain cloud is saturated with moisture something is stuck it's keeping it in place so it's not able to ascend anymore and um, this situation I, I, I feel almost like the mechanism in which the hot air balloon is able to rise is because the torch inside heats up the air so that it's uh, lighter than the surrounding atmosphere right and then when it hits the uh, when it hits the the rain clouds that's when like the air inside is the same temperature almost as like the air outside 
And so there's a situation here where I feel like losing steam, losing momentum, or a situation where somebody is like taking the wind out of your sails. Um, naysayers, you know, that, that concept comes up. And then I almost feel like you're capable of so much more. You're capable of, you know, really living to your true potential. And I feel like for many of you, there's this concept about being cognizant of people or situations or even self-limiting beliefs that have really held you back in the past. And you're possibly even confronted with it again because, you know, we are heading into the Mercury retrograde period. I believe from the 5th of March until the 23rd, roughly, it, it runs for about three weeks, where you're re-encountering or encountering again a situation where it really took the, the winds out of your sails. It, um, you know, it, it might have been like an obstacle. You felt like your life was going to go one way. And then that situation just plopped down right in front of you. And you had to make very, very, very swift changes at a very, very short amount of time in order to accommodate. And I feel like in a way, it's one of those sliding door moments that, you know, no matter how old you are, you always think back to that pivotal moment in time. And you're just like, what if I had taken a different route? What if I had taken a different path? What if I had done things differently? I wonder what my life, the trajectory of my life would have looked like right now. And so you always think back at that moment where you were like kind of, um, um, at the apex or you know you felt like life could go no wrong and then something like that kind of plops itself you know I'm thinking like the glass ceiling where you feel like you couldn't ascend any longer and then I also feel like you know this is a something is happening this month that might trigger a, a memory or a situation very similar to that incident or something might be brought to light about that incident and it's coming back again a lot of the times you know patterns repeat and cycles repeat and especially um, old circumstances old people come back into the picture so that we can do things differently so that we can you know learn from the past and make a different set of decisions related to that situation okay so that's what I feel here um, I was doing the Virgo reading and um, for the beginning of March and um, if you have any Virgo in your chart like Sun Moon Rising Venus even I would recommend that you watch that especially if you have a Virgo moon and Virgo is your polar opposite and that's why I'm bringing up the Virgo reading the Virgo reading was a lot about developing to our full potential, being self-sufficient. And I feel like this, uh, there's something here that brings you back to a moment in time where you felt like you were on course to developing to your full potential. Okay. Um, I feel for many of you, it could be, you know, wanting to um, pursue higher education bachelor's degree, master's degree, um, graduate degree, like a PhD, a, a law degree, a doctorate degree, um, something significant, very, very significant. And then something happened, possibly for some of you guys, uh, pregnancies, possibly being in a relationship where you had to cater to the partner. Um, so, you know, like I, I felt like something kind of derailed your plans. Okay. And then I also feel like it's like a missed opportunities. That's what it feels like. And then you always think back at that moment in time and you're longing for the good old days or you are longing for that situation to present the opportunity to present itself again because you're like, I would do things so differently this time around. That's what it feels like to me. And then I'm also sensing as well uh, with the Virgo reading, the whole concept about we are all here because we are expected to develop to our full potential. And basically what that means is to be better and better and better versions of ourselves by learning from past mistakes, by learning from mistakes that other people make, 
by always striving and improving and aiming for um, excellence. So it's like, okay, I did this. It didn't work that time. Uh, I'm going to take notes so that next time I don't make the same mistakes so that we can break ourselves out of cycles. So it, it comes to, you know, that whole hot air balloon rising. Okay. Rising to our maker, pretty much meeting our maker, rising to our full potential and continuing to rise despite whatever is happening in our environment okay it's like yes there are dark clouds there are um you know there there are um rain clouds and if we rise above it into the stratosphere we're going to be able to be on top of all of that and th those drops of rain the lightning the thunder the the scary parts aren't gonna touch us so we need to keep rising we need to you know turn on that um that torch keep going and and keep progressing okay so let's talk about the reading for the remainder of this month once again i want to wish you all a very very happy birthday um happy solar return and um i like this reading i like the way that it is coming out and i like the the imagery uh presented okay so first off I feel like there are situations in your life here where I definitely see um, you're dealing with somebody who is a little bit of a talker, okay? Somebody that is um, promises a lot, promises like your, you your wildest dreams. And I almost feel like there's a situation here where you put a lot of faith and a lot of stock in this person, okay? And then I also feel, and, and the person shows up here as a magician. This is um, from this deck. This is someone who's who's a player, okay? From this deck. So this is someone with a glass of martini in his hands. He's got four arms, and he's you know got all the the, the elements. So it's almost like someone who's a social chameleon, a, a life of the party. They can be everything to everybody, okay? Um, so I feel like there's a little bit of a player vibe here, but what I'm sensing overall is um, I feel like you, you've got somebody that is um, really charming, um, who, who, who is like, they're such a social chameleon and they're such great orators that they convince other people. Like they're, they're very good at persuasion. They're very good at arguments. They're very good at winning an argument. They're very good at painting you a really rosy image picture. And what I feel is um, for many of you in the past, you might've put a lot of stock in this person. You might've believed every word that they, they, they told you. You might have, you know, put a lot of hopes and a lot of dreams and a lot of wishes in this person. And then I also feel like in a way, they painted such a beautiful picture. It was full of promise. It was just full of magic that, you know, as romantic and as highly romanticized as you are, you're inclined to believe them because I feel in a way, it's almost like it was such a convincing argument. It was such a, a rosy image. It was just so full of magic and, and just like out of this world that you bought the fantasy and I don't blame you for it and I feel over time this situation um, led you to you know really see the person in their true colors okay that they might have been just a talker and not so much of a doer because when it comes to delivery they're kind of like this okay page of pentacles kind of like this they gave like little pieces of scraps here and there, but they never brought 100% to the table. Everything that was promised, I feel like it was just all airs. It was all a front and it was all just um, mediocre. It didn't live up to your expectations. It didn't live up to the reality of whatever it was that they verbally promised. And I also feel like they have a lot or they, they, yeah, I feel like they have a lot, or they might have hyped up the fact that they have a lot. But the bottom line is, I feel like they kept it to themselves. 
okay and so i see you have you know moved yourself away from the situation we have here the death card okay moving on and whatever it was that they promised you you realize at the end of the day that you had to be the one in charge of your own destiny that you had to be the one to create things that things weren't going to come through from another person and i feel like you were in the process of learning to be self-sufficient learning to take care of all of your needs and not having to rely on another person so whatever this situation was it revealed to you how potentially dependent you can be on another person it also revealed to you that a lot of the times you could have been very naive and fallen into you know the 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 rosy picture because you wanted to believe this person was full of magic you wanted to believe in that magic so it wasn't like they str strung you along and led you down this path i feel like it took two to to tangle right and so it's like it's not the, the the fault here you're realizing is i shouldn't have blamed that person because i i feel like you felt you contributed to to being you know blindly walked around walked down this rosy garden path and realize at the end of the day that you know you were left empty-handed and i feel like this was a very karmic relationship because your energy changed okay you were this queen of cups like hopelessly madly um i feel like in a way like idealistic and then you transform you became this queen of swords where you became a lot more skeptical where you became a lot more like oh yeah why don't you show me concrete evidence and so there was a major transformation within you okay and i feel like you were very upset with this person but you never had a chance to voice your anger voice your frustration because i feel like with a lot of um pisces harsh words you understand that harsh words cut really 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 deep and you're not a confrontational type of a person and i feel like you're dealing with someone who's very amorphous like they they they're very good at manipulating and so whatever you throw at them they have a comeback and it gets to the point where you question your reality did that really happen you know like did i really say that in the past did he really say that in the past they made you question your reality and when you're dealing with the social chameleon you can never tackle them head on because they're very slippery and very evasive and so i feel like this situation was very karmic it might have uh drowned out that sense of idealism within you that that you know that that hopeless romantic that person that was very loving and caring and and just unconditionally always 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 giving to others i feel like it made you a little bit harder and and more and colder but at the same time it gave you this sense of discernment and perception okay and so you're at a point where you're definitely realizing as well I can't wait on anybody to make my dreams a reality. I have to go out there. Um, you know, um in the trenches and one by one by one by one like by brick by brick, mortar by mortar, I have to, you know, create my own foundation, create my own destiny, create that business, build it from the ground up. No one was going to come in there and be a partner with me or like uh be a financier. I have to physically do the work myself. And then I also feel to a certain extent it's almost like I need to, you know, that that wake up call. I need to get going. I need to move things along. And so there's definitely um a situation here where you are overcoming and and transforming into a more proactive person grabbing life by the horns making things happen for yourself coming into a situation with a strategy okay 
How am I going to get this off the ground? How much money do I need? How much resources am I able to afford? How much startup cost do I need? And you know, where am I going to store all my, my inventory? So I feel like you're coming up with some type of a major, major business plan for yourself because you're at a point where you want to be self-sufficient and the best way for you to be self-sufficient, you're realizing too, is, you know, self-employment in a way, everybody knows that, but then we also are plagued with a lot of fears about starting businesses. What if it doesn't get off the ground? Should I quit my nine to five job in order to, you know, uh, dump 100% of my attention and my, all of my resources, all of my savings, my pension, etc., into this business endeavor? Is it going to get off the ground? So I feel like there's a lot of fears here. You've always had really, really creative ideas to make money, but they were always kept as sidelines, side projects, uh, little hobbies here and there, you know. Um, you never felt like you could manifest it and make it a reality. But what I'm seeing here with this card, it is about manifesting too. If we're looking at this as your energy, the magician, the manifester, the person with all the skills and the capabilities, all they needed was some type of a solid business plan, not a business partner, not somebody, not a consultant, not somebody to come in and help you. They just need it to be a little bit more rational, to kind of like have a strategy, to put pen to paper and come up with a business proposal, a business plan, to sit there and crunch the numbers, to do the things that the Queen of Cups might not be very good at because she's artsy, she's creative, she gets distracted too. You know, she's like holding this bowl, but she's looking at the fish. So like, it's not something that this, energy is comfortable with but it's very it's it's a very comfortable realm for this type of an energy and you have already transformed into this type of an energy all it takes for you is to come up with that concrete plan start laying the foundation pentacle by pentacle and not limit yourself whatever didn't work out in the past ten of swords whatever situation didn't work out in the past you can't let this be that rain cloud hovering over you and disallowing you from ascending and developing towards your full potential and I feel like there's a sense here about I can't do it alone I'm just one person. It's all very, very scary, foreign territory to me. I, I don't really know how to do it. Um, you know, being the nurturer is like my field of expertise, but now this is like cutthroat business world. How am I gonna be able to manage? So I, I feel like you're really, really plagued with that self-doubt, that anxiety, that, that sense of like, oh no, last time I tried to do it, it didn't work out too well. So you're really, really overcoming this and you're moving towards this self-employment okay this is the um flying over overcoming your financial worries okay flying over financial problems and especially when it comes to um, independence this is one of the most independent person in the deck it indicates somebody that is able to uh, harvest all the things their investments are the things that are generating them money and as a result of it they have a lot of leisure time they can take vacation they can take trips and all of their pentacles are growing in the garden so it's like it's 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 a state of financial independence okay so many of you are at a point where you're finally able to jump into this situation because you're no longer letting your fears hold you back because you're learning from the past as well and you're figuring out and you're trying you're you're definitely a lot more strategic i'm seeing that i'm also sensing as well um there's a, a whole concept about learning okay the page of coins page of pentacles is sort of like the student okay if if this were a person they would kind of like be an undergrad student in like business accounting finance something related to you know managing money managing assets managing personnel even human resources so they would be like learning how to do accounting how to um, create a spreadsheet how to come up with a business proposal how to start something 
from like small scale, like a cottage industry, and then growing it really, really, really big to the point where it becomes uh, self-sufficient. It, it grows on its own and you don't need to take care of it. So how do I start small and then gradually expand to the point where I can outcompete all of my competitors? So the five of wands is greatly about competition, okay? Um, so I feel like many of you are thinking about that, like outcompeting all of my uh, competitors. Um, even I'm, I'm hearing like um, high profit margins, okay? How do I like uh, reduce the cost so that I can make more? That's what it feels like to me. And then with the five of pentacles, you kind of need to talk yourself. The, the five of pentacles is usually like the inner struggle. Okay, should I do this? Should I do that? On the one hand, if I did this, it's going to lead to this outcome. So in, in, in the end, you're kind of like pulled in different directions because you're telling yourself something happened in the past. I don't really believe my capabilities. I was wrong with my assessment in the past. And you're letting that situation color the potential of what something could be now. So keep in mind that you know the retrograde energy does bring about old people from our past old situations previous ways of doing patterns cycles it's bringing all of these things to light so that we can realize you know what this is in the past and i need to let, lay it to rest and that's why you have such big transformative cards that indicates letting go death transition it can't be revived. We have to let it go. We can't resuscitate it anymore. And then we have to come into a better sense of our emotional state needs to be a lot more balanced. We need to draw back our energy and focus on us and focus on whatever it is that we're trying to nourish and grow. Whatever you're holding in the palms of your hands, this is the thing that your 100% your focus needs to be devoted on because that's what you're trying to grow. Not all the limiting fears, the other thoughts that are racing through your head. Am I good enough? Am I capable enough? And moving from that vantage point, going forward, you're going to have a lot of success, okay? This is one of the best cards in the deck and it denotes worldly success, getting recognition, um, being on center stage, and especially when it comes overall to like, um, outshining your competitors being chosen um getting a win getting like um, a major win uh getting recognition and once again you know that whole concept about the win in your sales okay somebody like poked holes in your sales once upon a time you've mended your sales you've mended your sales and now you're getting that second wind okay so I feel like there's going to be a lot of progression moving forward very, very quickly. And um, I feel like the opportunity is there, but you can't really sit on the sidelines for too long. You kind of have to be quick on the uptake, okay? This is kind of like ruminating, overthinking, overanalyzing an emotional situation. And the emotional situation, I, I feel like what it boils down to here is I feel like some of you might be comfortable in a work environment and you're seriously thinking about self-employment and you're not 100% sure if it's like, you know, should I leave this job? I like my coworkers. I like the people that I work with. Should I leave the safety nest of that situation and jump into something and especially if you, you've had some disappointments in the past, it's hard to overcome that and believe that you can succeed. But I feel like you have a lot of success coming into the picture. And then I also feel like, you know, you're going through a very transformative phase where you're looking at situations very skeptically. You're looking at people very skeptically. So if somebody's coming back from your past, an ex potentially with this magician, this is someone who's a little bit slimy and, um, manipulative and I feel like he or she is very good at deflecting okay deflecting problems they come waltzing in as if nothing has ever happened as if they didn't do anything wrong as if it's all in your head and I feel like you're getting a little bit sassy with this person 
okay? You're just going to be like, I want to hear what he or she has to say. I want to hear what ridiculous excuses they're coming up with. Because I feel like, you know, before you might have bought the charade, you might have bought the story, but now you're turning into this Queen of Swords where you know how to make that comeback. You know what to dish out. To be, You're no longer naive. You're no longer um, blinded, I feel, okay? So this is a really, really good, you know, second half of the month. And I know that we had um, the, the, the beginning of the month, the reading was a little bit challenging. And so I feel like moving forward, you have everything at your disposal to make the situation a lot better, developing to your full potential, mending the sails, you know, mending the holes in your sails so that you can propel yourself and accelerate yourself towards a lot more success, a lot more self-sufficiency, a lot more financial independence as well. And all of this is come by, coming by through your own hard work and through your own sense of planning and logic and strategy, okay? So I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. I'm really happy to see this and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of uh, March. Um, for those who are looking for a private reading or um, you're trying to find somebody who uh, could read for you, I highly recommend. Um, I have a, a psychic that I have uh, regularly consulted with um, within the past two years. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California and I've included her scheduling website in the description box below. All right, so if you're interested in booking a reading, I highly recommend her. So just give it a try, okay? I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful birthday time. Take care.